biggest land animal currently roaming Earth is the African elephant. They weigh between 2,286 to 6,350 kilograms and grow between 2.5 and, and 4 meters tall at the shoulder. However, 252 to 66 million years ago, in what was called the Mesozoic Era, were creatures larger and longer than modern elephants. These were the sauropods. You'll probably recognize the sauropod. They're long-necked, four-legged herbivores with long tails. Some of the most famous dinosaurs were sauropods, including the Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, and Brontosaurus. It is this group that the biggest ever dinosaurs belong to. So who was the biggest? Well, let's meet some of the candidates in the match between the heavyweights. Our first candidate is the underdog, and admittedly the rogue candidate in this match, because it isn't a sauropod. In the blue corner, it is the largest carnivore, the Spinosaurus. Roaming the Earth 100 million years ago, the Spinosaurus had distinctive spines growing from its back, which were up to 2.1 meters long. Although Spinosaurus fossils are incomplete, the largest estimate for the Spinosaurus is 16 to 18 meters long and between 7.7 .7 to 9.9 .9 tons in weight. In the red corner is our first sauropod competitor, the Saltosaurus. Getting its name from the city of Salta in Argentina where it was discovered, this sauropod is a little smaller compared to some of its cousins. They weighed between 2.5 to 6.87 tons and were 8.5 to 12.8 meters long. But don't completely write off the Saltosaurus in this match. They had a unique strategy to defend themselves from predators. Fossils show that the Saltosaurus was covered in bony armored plates, which would have made it trickier for predators to get their teeth into. As cool as that is, this is a video about the biggest dinosaur. So in round one, the Spinosaurus is the winner. Next up to take on the Spinosaurus in the battle for the largest dinosaur is the Dreadnoughtus. The Dreadnoughtus was a Titanosaur. Titanosaurs lived at the end of the Cretaceous period, which was 145 million to 66 million years ago. Their fossils have been found on every continent, and they were some of the biggest creatures to ever exist on Earth. Their huge size often helped them evade predators. Found in Patagonia, Argentina, an almost complete fossil of the Dreadnoughtus was uncovered in 2009. Using the current fossil record, we think the Dreadnoughtus would have roamed the Earth 77 million years ago. As for their stats, this dinosaur was 26 meters long. Imagine three London buses in a row. It weighed a huge 65 tons. There's no match here. The Dreadnoughtus takes this one. While the Dreadnoughtus was huge, it had some big ancestors too. Next dinosaur to fight for the crown of largest dino is the Titanosaur, also known as the Patagotitan Maiorum or Patagotitan. Titanosaur remains are older than the Dreadnoughtus, living about 100 million years ago. But Granddad certainly had some impressive stats. A study in 2017 estimated the size of the titanosaur using various fossils found in Patagonia, South America, including a thigh bone measuring 2.4 meters long, almost the same size as an African elephant. Using these estimations, some paleontologists think the titanosaur would have weighed 77 tons and measured 37.2 meters in length. Others believe the titanosaur was 31 meters long and weighed about 50 tons. Furthermore, the dinosaur bones discovered had completed their growth, so they are potentially even bigger dinosaurs of the species waiting to be discovered. We've got to give round three of this match to the Titanosaur. But this fight isn't over yet. Sitting in the light and airy Museo Municipal Carmen Funes in Argentina is a 40 meter long reconstruction of our next fighter, 
the Argentinosaurus. In 1987, fossil hunters discovered what they thought was a large chunk of petrified wood. It wasn't until 1993 that this fossil, which was the size of a fully grown human, was recognized as a single vertebrae, a small bone which forms the backbone of the Argentinosaurus. No complete skeletons of the Argentinosaurus have been found. Researchers can only guess the dinosaur's stats, with estimates coming in at a length of 37 to 40 meters, a height of 7.3 meters, and a weight between 99 and 110 tons. For this record, this means the Argentinosaurus weighed more than a Boeing 373. They didn't stop growing their entire lives, which would have helped them reach these massive heights. If these estimates are correct, the Argentinosaurus could have been the largest dinosaur to roam the Earth. Indeed, the largest creature to ever walk on land. But hold your horses, because we have another competitor in the ring. While the Argentinosaurus and Titanosaurus were heavy and bulky, there was another dinosaur who was even longer in length. The Supersaurus. The Supersaurus lived 150 million years ago during the Jurassic period. This dinosaur is much lighter than the others, at 31.8 to 36.3 tons. But if we're measuring our champion on length, the Supersaur has this one in the bag. It's longer than the Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus, coming in at a whopping 42 meters from snout to tail. Paleontologist Brian Curtis, who is based out of Arizona Museum of Natural History, is a big champion of this gentle giant. That is a crazy length, longer than three yellow school buses nose to tail. And considering we never find the largest individual in the fossil record, how much longer could this animal have gotten? Curtis told journalists. So who is the winner? It isn't an easy task to figure out who was the biggest dinosaur to ever roam the land. It's rare to unearth a complete fossil, and most dinosaurs weren't fossilized. Remains might have been scavenged or otherwise destroyed. We already know of some potentially huge fossils that have been lost, like the discovery of Edward Drinker Cope in 1878. Cope found a bone from a sauropod called Amphicelius. It measured twice as long as any other bone discovered, so could have been a contender for the largest dinosaur ever. But this bone has been lost for a long time. There was another case of the fossilized bones of the Bruhathkiosaurus in India. In 1987, it was described as being longer than 35 meters and weighing over 80 tons. But in 2017, it was reported that this fossil had disintegrated, meaning they no longer exist. Plus, there's debate over how to measure the biggest dinosaur. Does length, weight, or height count for the most? What do you think? People use different techniques to measure dinosaurs. In a way, everyone is on a different playing field. Different models will get different results. A lot of this process uses guesswork and estimations. But finally, new discoveries can change expectations. For example, paleontologists discovered that the vertebrae of sauropods were filled with air sacs. This meant they had to scale down how they determined mass. You might be wondering why land animals today don't grow to the sizes dinosaurs used to. Steve Brusati looked into this in his 2018 book, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs. First, he looks at what animals need to grow to these colossal sizes, and what makes the sauropods so good at it. They need a lot of food, for example. The Brontosaurus, who measured up to 22 meters long, would have needed to eat 100 pounds of leaves, stems, and twigs every day. Well, sauropods have their long necks. Not only would they be able to reach up higher than other plant-eating dinosaurs to grab food, but they could also park themselves in one spot all day and fill up as they please. They would need to grow fast. Otherwise, it would take them over a century to get that big. This ability to grow at this rate comes from their dinosaur morph ancestors, who had more active lifestyle, faster growth rates, and higher metabolism. Sauropods inherited this. 
they would need to breathe efficiently. The sauropods also inherited a great pair of lungs from their ancestors. They were super efficient, like birds' lungs are today. They would need to have a strong, sturdy skeleton, but not too bulky to move. We don't want a chunkosaurus situation. As we learnt earlier about the air sacs on sauropods vertebrae, these air sacs made their skeleton sturdy enough and light enough to move around. They would need to shed excess body heat efficiently. In hot weather, big creatures are more liable to overheating and dying. The efficient lungs and light skeleton would have helped with this, providing an internal air conditioning system. So there you have it. There were certain biological conditions that fell into place that allowed sauropods to grow to their magnificent sizes. There are many other large dinosaurs we didn't get a chance to touch on today, like the Xijing Titan Chanchanesis, or Ruyangosaurus giantius. Are there any other colossal dinosaurs you'd like us to cover? Let us know in the comments.